Oh, like all that shit? Okay, cool. Let's go, Chilo. We're live? Play my shit. We're live. Yeah. Now, everybody uh -oh. in the 313, get your motherfucking... Yeah, okay, now? That's the way we start. All right. I like that. Welcome to uh, another new uh, new episode of uh, Good Set, bro. Uh, this episode is brought to you by uh, absolutely no one. So if you have a product out there that you want to push or whatever, hit me up at goodsetbro.cast at gmail.com. Today, today we have Corpus Christi's finest... Uh, he's still in Corpus, unlike Selena or Waterburger. Please give it up for yeah. your boy, Mr. Javi Luna. Yes, yeah, <sighs> family owned. Flam fam <laughs> established 1983. What's up? What's up, brother? <laughs> How you doing? Good, man. How you doing? Pretty, pretty good, man. Hey, uh, have you been to Laredo before? To I have. Perform? Uh, I've, I've, I was actually just thinking about that, uh, cause, uh, I got here and I went to go eat at Waterburger. And I was really you. So you left Corpus, yeah, came yeah. over here to eat water. Yeah, I know. I was thinking that's about, fucked but, up. But I'm gonna probably like hit up like a palenque or something, or like on the way out. Like you're a sick person. Uh, uh, but uh, but yeah, I was thinking the different places that I performed. I've I've done the uh, what's the uh, energy arena arena. Who'd you do that I, with? I did that with the uh, Latin Comedy Jam. Oh, cool. Uh, I've done the little theater for the uh, Comedy Jam for George. Comedy Jam for George, yeah. Uh, I've done the uh, Casablanca. The event center? The event center with Raymond Orta and Mario Salazar, John cool. Stringer, and uh, I think Ponchi was on that show also. And then uh, I did another event center. Here? Yeah, I don't remember the name of Maybe it. Maybe the conventions, uh, the Civic Center? No. I've done the Civic Center with... with, with uh, Raymond Orta as well, mm -hmm. the Laredo Civic Center. So I've performed a handful of times, and then another place with with uh, with Chingo. It was like a quinceanera dance. <laughs> I think they had had like Bronco there like the week oh, before or something perfect. like that. How fucking long have you been doing it? Man? <laughs> this is my. I'm going on my ninth year, so eight complete years. Nine back years, in, and in you've done most of fucking Laredo, and I haven't, man. <laughs> I had to create my own spaces to do. And I love comedy. Laredo, man. There, there are truly like every time. Like you, it's one of those places you forget how awesome it is to come do comedy. Yeah. It's like, I guess it, you, you know. I know you've been busy the last couple of years. Yeah. Kind of building a scene here, uh, but there was back before when I first started coming. Like they were like, "Oh, there's no comedy here, so we come out whenever we hear comedy." Oh, and I used to do AJ's too. Oh yeah. Is yeah. that where I met you? Did you? Um, no. No, but that was like right before. But I, I've, done a, I've, I've done I've done too. Okay. I've done it with Mario and uh, yeah. John Stringer and them and stuff like that. Yeah, but yeah. like I said, whenever it came to those shows, local comedians never got shit. Like I honestly, I honestly got my bigger breaks going out of town myself. Yeah, I, I was never absolutely. getting recognition here in my that, own city. That's the way. That's the way it happens. Bro. You know what but, I mean? You know, back then they didn't want you. Now they had. I started six years ago, and guess yeah. where I started? When when I the first time I ever stepped on stage. It was at Chuckles Comedy Club in Corpus Christi. Your first time ever on ever, stage? Ever. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, when, I, when I first got the guts and I was like, okay, well, I got more information. Like, how do I even do this? I so mean, we were the closest place? Yeah, like yeah. Not San Antonio? Well, I, I, didn't, I, I looked at a lot of them. I, Austin came up a lot. And then I saw Corpus. And I was like, Corpus is about two, two and a half hours away. Yeah, about And, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, I was confident. Dude, it... It was a, an interesting set. It, it, it was like I said, <laughs> it didn't go bad. I, I remember, <laughs> I remember that I, I stopped at one point and I told the audience, "I was like, I'm sorry, it's my first time doing this." <laughs> it was it's so a good like, idea, dude. No, no. It was so embarrassing because my stomach was shaking yeah. on stage and my legs were shaking on stage, but you can't really see it on the video. Yeah. You know that video is not ever gonna be out there. It was soon. It'll it'll be out soon. But dude, it, it was it was the most horrifying experience i've ever had and after i got off stage i just had a stomach ache <laughs> and i want to go drink at what hannigan's or one of those fucking irish pubs or whatever <laughs> oh probably cassidy's yeah cassidy's, cassidy's. yeah dude it, it but that's the first time i ever do, did comedy at all like chuckles comedy which is now mesquite street right 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 yeah i mean same location yeah yeah same location uh, different uh different owner or whatever oh doing. really it, it was oh you know well, what well, well, john was roman John's, was, was actually thing, there yeah, at the yeah. time by the way he said that i remember they were like oh it's only five minutes or whatever 
I did about eight minutes up there because they never let me. It was kind of lawless. Yeah, back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I'm running. I don't. I just got like three minutes of material, man. Why don't you lie to me now? Yeah, and that, that was kind of when back when people more we used to get more out of towners in because no, it was just kind of in the in the form of time. Yeah, like no one was really keeping time. Like it was just more. Let's like we would go until midnight. Like it, it wasn't a thing. Now it's like we gotta have it. Yeah, done by eleven. Let's keep the sets short because now we now we got 20 comics yeah going up so now we can we when, have to be if everyone wants to go up when did it explode in court in corpus like it, it's been like because you started nine years ago what, what yeah. did you first do comedy was it in corpus yeah it was i started in corpus doing like uh non-profit charity events okay and like so i i wanted to try to like try out this material before i went in <laughs> front of my friends to try to make them laugh kind of thing it's uh, so i wanted some anonymity and just kind of started looking for for places and i found this very small little group of comics that were doing it and they were doing they would go up at like these variety mics with like yeah. punk bands and you know yeah, uh, yeah, yeah stuff like that and we get put up like at the end of the night they're like oh comics oh yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll put you on like at 1 30 and no one's in there and they're clean, putting up the chairs and that kind of stuff and uh when you started was there a comedy club there was the vent which was John Roman was running that uh, along with another guy that does, doesn't really, he doesn't do any live events anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> that was just a, like a comedy room. It was Friday nights, two shows. Okay. And, and so, I mean, it was a comedy club in, in the sense that it was a designated room in the back of a sports bar that put on comedy. Okay, shows. cool. So it was the closest thing to a comedy club that a knife that, almost hit you in the that head. That we had. Yeah. Uh, that, that sounds oh, Laredo. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you you just have knives just hanging up. Like, yeah. what, what do you have these up with? Like, I don't, man strips or like, they're supposed Scotch to be Velcro. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, I I don't know where to put them. <laughs> I don't know where to put them. My dad, and my dad mo travels and he brings me knives. I don't. I never asked for a and, knife. And the most logical place is like, hey, let me hang them on the wall. Mm -hmm. I thought <laughs> it was cool, but I'm gonna take them off soon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that that one that fell, it actually had a, a, a sheath, so you would have just yeah, gotten a, a chingasso instead of like a cut oh, or anything. Oh, okay, you know. So I, I don't know enough. First about time knives. ever. Do you, do you, I hope that I hope it's okay. Is that the purpose of a sheath? You can't actually go. That's why they're made. Correct. Out of yeah, you just you stuff, hit so. someone and warn them. I'm gonna take it out of the sheath and cut you if you don't stop. Okay, that, I knife. think that's what it's okay. for, at least. So comedy, man. Comedy. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, you almost died. It's okay. uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna just take another drink just so I can. Yeah, you should cheers. Erase thanks, that thanks from for, my from my memory. Thanks for being here. So yeah, so when you started doing comedy in Corpus, when did you when did did you see that it started exploding? Like another person started doing comedy, and sure, another sure. person doing started comedy. So, like 2012, early 2012, um, I started an open mic, and at around the same time, the club started an open mic. There was no comedy, only open mics. Mm -hmm. So once that started once there was now two comedy open mics where before there was none that kind of brings people out of the woodwork like oh i've always wanted to try comedy because kind of like yourself if someone has you don't know any comedians you've yeah. never done it before <clears throat> there's that question we get it after shows all the time how do i get into it you find an open mic well if there's an open mic in your town then yeah, you're, usually you're, when they ask me i, I tell them get the fuck out of my face yeah, don't don't you fucking talk to me god <laughs> Get back behind the rope. Get the fuck out of my there's, face. There's no That's fucking ropes at my yeah. shows. Uh, you, you can t you can talk to me. I like it when people like will hit you up and they're like, "Hey man, I always want to do comedy. Can you tell me how to do it?" Like, yeah, go. Like, you should go do comedy. <laughs> That's the best. I, That's I mean, a bit like what you know. Oh yeah, dude, come on, come, hey, come on, get on stage, bro. Like, yeah, I think, I'm going to Laredo tonight. You want to come with me? Fine. I think people think there's a formula to kind of wiggle your way in, but in really, they think it's like the oil field, like where if you know somebody, <laughs> <laughs> like I don't actually have to be funny. I don't actually have to know how to weld or do any oil field. Like just as long as like one of my theos works there, like <laughs> I'll get the fucking job. I'm good. Chewy got me in. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> Apply. Yeah. Well, I'll just, tell him. I'll just apply. Go put your application. I'll tell. I'll, I'll call him. I'll call him. Tell no, him the point. Mine's a very generic story. Mine's a, <laughs> all, all my life. Like my friends always. You should be a comedian. But I never. I never thought of it. Like back then when I was a kid and shit. Because I've been a class clown since I was a fucking kid. And I wouldn't consider myself a class clown. I was just funny. Right. Right. But I never had into my. Oh, I should be a comedian. That never happened that way to me. Right. I was just like, I have some pretty funny thoughts, and uh, I want to see what people think about them. Like right. that, that, that's exactly what I, I didn't even go with the intention. If people are going to laugh, I just wanted to see what reaction they would get 
of, of me saying stuff. So I went and I did some stupid fucking jokes that uh, a beginner says. And I just, like I said, I don't think I want to do this again. I don't think I want to do this again. And then I just, I'm addicted. It's oh, like yeah. heroin. It happens, right? Oh, those, those jokes that you say in the first year. Get, you know, that, that's why I always warn people and people kind of look at me sideways when I do it. When I see like someone that just started yeah. like recording themselves. <laughs> and, and and I've st- it's to the point that I've stopped giving the advice. I'm like, hey man, like, but you probably don't don't like post that. <laughs> like, and they, they, it comes off like a dick because I think I'm telling like, no, you suck. Don't post it. Like, listen, you're not gonna be happy with that set <laughs> a year from now. Maybe even six months from now, you're not gonna fucking be don't happy. Don't put that on because the growth the the growth is exponential within those first two years. Yeah, when absolutely. you look back on what you did your first few months, it's like fucking horrible. And like, keep it, record it, watch it for yourself. But when they're like, yeah, I'm gonna post it on Facebook tonight, it's like, no. And like, then they put a, a caption. I had to fear. They put this whole rant like my fears. I, I accomplished it because right. I never thought I'd be doing this, and it just right. feels so good to make people. And it feels good. And for the most part, people are gonna gonna give you nice feedback, and yeah. it's gonna feel good. You're brave. You're like it. That was so great. Oh my god. Let me know when you're on HBO. <laughs> like. And, <laughs> I'm gonna tell everyone that my friend's a comedian. Oh my god, I always knew it. You were so funny in school, and it feels great. But then you're gonna go, then you're gonna go back in a year from now, and you're gonna watch and be like, "That was fucking horrible." And all my friends are dicks because they didn't. No one fucking said a goddamn thing. They just encouraged this behavior. When said, you should do it like me and just keep it on the laptop and you pull it out and you, then you feel good about yourself. I, You're like, I, I put my look first, how far I've, be, I've come. I put my first set on YouTube and uh, yeah, we all did. I, I got like three views. It didn't matter, but I edited my film because I edited out the part where I was like, oh, I'm sorry, guys. This is the first time I do comedy. <laughs> I edited that shit out. <laughs> I, my best friend in comedy, he used to put up every open mic set on oh, his YouTube. No. And if you go to YouTube right now and i'm only gonna tell you because he's he's deceased now oh, david Sufuentes, and you will find <laughs> david Sufuentes open mic one open mic two open mic three open mic four and those are seriously the first four times he ever got up on stage oh to shit. do stand-up comedy now here, here's the issue with and that. then he died after the fourth one everyone no he didn't <laughs> he, i mean he went on longer but he stopped he stopped posting all of them and, and but here's the thing like people if you whatever you have a couple thousand friends on Facebook, whatever it is, they're gonna see it, and that's their first impression of you, and that's the first time the people saw you on stage. That's how they're gonna remember you. Yeah, there are still people. I've been doing this for eight years. There are still people that think for some in the, because the first time that they saw me, I did the fucking the hacky shit that a fat comic could fucking do. Right, my first couple months, when you get up there, oh, let me move the mic stand so you can see me. Uh, right. yeah, yeah, it's yeah. an old Louis Anderson joke. I didn't even know that that was a Louis Anderson <laughs> joke. It was just something easy to say while I'm doing this movement. Yeah. There, if I told you for how many years there was comics in Texas that wouldn't fuck with me because I did that, and I did it for close to a year before someone, <laughs> before John Roman and Daryl Felsberg finally pulled me aside and said, "Hey, uh, you probably don't want to do that anymore because that's like one of the hackiest jokes." Like ever, yeah. And it, and it and as soon as a comic now the audience says no to them, it, it was either funny and they laughed or not. But the comics make up their mind and they're like, oh, this guy's a fucking hack because he he opened with that yeah. fucking hack comics are so judgmental. It didn't matter anything that I said after that. All they heard <laughs> was that. And then yeah. And then first impressions like in real life are the worst thing to get over. If, yeah, first impressions and just impressions in general. Comics are the most judgmental people I've ever seen in my life. Comics are a different breed and not not in a good way i can, you could can see a room full of people laughing because you're killing it out there and yeah. you just see a comic go like this yeah <laughs> so like i uh just couple, no expression a couple years ago i had a post and i said i said uh, comedy scenes are like the movie mean girls but with like a ugly 30 something year old <laughs> <laughs> like we <laughs> like we like we're totally like like it's that secret like oh you're really pretty like oh thanks so you agree you're funny like we do that shit oh, so you hey, hey you're funny? funny dude oh oh thanks man oh so you think <laughs> so you think you're badass <laughs> like you, you're just gonna hey good set bro like oh thanks oh you thought that was that's a good actually set? where that comes from yeah uh, because no matter what happens on stage you can even have a bad set a comic just be right before he comes up he'll be like good set bro and it's then he'll default. just yeah 
that yeah. that's all it is so that's where i got that from and then me and josh castro from austin started making it a thing for everything we started saying good said bro like he like hit his knee and i was like oh good yeah, set, bro. A- everything above you didn't start crying on stage like it's good set, bro. Yeah, <laughs> like it, it could be, and it all, it all depends on the inflection too. I love it because it it can even amongst friends it can be a little bit. Have fasting. you ever seen anyone cry on stage? Uh, I've seen some people get 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 teary eyed, like <laughs> like definitely some stammering. That I'm pretty sure they they I wouldn't be surprised if they cried in the car. Uh, but you know, it's a thing you can even do. So kind of like hey, good set, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, you've like, been doing yeah. it for a while what's yeah. the craziest shit you've seen on stage i know you've seen like old ladies oh, take off their shirts yeah. and stuff like that yeah um so being the the uh i'll say the most consistent open mic in town we definitely attract the mentally ill uh was that you can even hear uh, that movement oh wait yeah. i hear is it you are you moving your shaking your leg no it's not me Oh, it's that chair. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> you're going like this, and I can hear. Wiki, 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 wiki. I can hear it on like, 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 like breaking, like rig, rig. No, like a fucking like, asshole oh. moving his leg. Oh, who's <laughs> got restless leg syndrome in here? Right here, Josh. This he's dude. drinking coffee. What? Well, that's not a. When he's drinking he's... coffee at four at six o'clock in the evening. Yeah, that's what he does. Oh. Uh, Starbucks he, too. Man. He he wanted an americana, a cold one, and they give him lava. I don't even know what that is, bro. Yeah, that's me neither. But I mean, I'm happy he didn't get what he want. Yeah. So like. Usually, it's like a couple of shots of espresso and just water, right? But I forgot that they're not normally iced. So when I asked for it, they just gave me a fucking hot cup of lava. And I was like, fuck, it's hot as fuck. I guess. <laughs> well, thanks, Josh. That's a great story. Thank you. What the I'll fuck? This coffee's <laughs> hot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was my if reaction. you're going to sell hot coffee, you should fucking warn people. <laughs> That's exactly right. Oh, shit. Um, I forgot what we were talking about, man. So fucking Corpus. I I, I like Corpus. Yeah. I like Corpus because it's the closest. We were talking about crazy people, man. Oh yeah, yeah. What's the crazy Cra- thing? Uh, Cra- crazy. I I'm mean, gonna, I'm gonna comedy. Lower. Comedy attracts the mentally ill. I'm hearing you. Uh, it, you know, so we've we've yes, we've had uh, old ladies come and, and strip down to a bodysuit. Uh, I've definitely. We've had again for some reason old ladies. A lot of old ladies come. Uh, we had one come with a. With a puppet, but oh. not like a ventriloquist dummy, like like an actual, like a marionette. Oh no, puppet, <laughs> and uh, and try to do something with that on stage, completely like improv. Uh, let's see. Oh, the absolute craziest. Uh, this is back. It was still in the chuckles days. The the stage was still in the corner. Some guy from Laredo bombed. <laughs> yeah, horrendously. yeah, that, that was it. That was it. And uh, this this dude came in, and he, I guess he. The, he didn't know that it was a comedy mic yeah because he came in and he was like uh and he didn't even speak english very well he was like maybe like german or like some <laughs> some russian or i don't know what it was it was a skinny ass white dude like i don't know exactly where he was from but he wasn't from here wherever he was from he comes in he's like music and we're like like oh no we don't it's an open mic we're not doing like musical cues <laughs> you're not gonna get an intro song and you know we're not gonna play it back dj <laughs> Well, y'all weren't hype enough. Run that back, like we're not like that's not. Do you have Vogan stuff? And so, like, he got like upset. Like he was like, <laughs> okay, and we're like, the best you can do is take your phone, hold it up to the mic. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I think I know where this is going. <laughs> so he gets up there, and we're still thinking comedy open mic. He must he must have like a song that he sings to, or or he does a funny dance. You know the stuff that people do. Whatever, I, you know, I don't have any musical cues in my act, but you know, God bless those to do. So he was gonna get up there, and, and we thought he was gonna do comedy, and there was a part where he was gonna hold <laughs> up his song. No, apparently this guy was a singer, and I use that term <laughs> loosely because <laughs> he gets up there and he starts playing this like trance type. I don't know a lot of electronic music terms, yeah, but like EDM. Right. But it was this weird, like computerized music, whatever it was he was playing. And then he starts doing this, what I can only call like an, an alien space chant. <laughs> like if you may, take like Gregorian chant, like vocally, imagine, like, like he started yeah, he voice. was just doing like, like auditory exercises, just like, uh, all that shit was going on. <laughs> with the straightest fucking face 
<laughs> ever. And the entire room is fucking doubled over <laughs> laughing. And he's just getting more pissed. Like his, you could see <laughs> his, his eyes are getting fucking huge, but he's not breaking his fucking character. <laughs> he's just <there>, ah! <laughs> and he he's not like no muscle movement, dude. He's just standing there, just like with his arms locked <laughs> down by his side. Like, ah! <laughs> and we're like, this dude's gonna fucking kill us. Like like we were seriously like, is this is, is I'm this going guy to like murder yeah, everyone guess, in yeah, here? It was and then he <laughs> he ends. And everyone fucking just uproarious, just fucking everyone's going ape shit. He murdered he it, murdered. but it wasn't the response he wanted. And he just gets off the stage and walks out the fucking door, like pissed off. And we never saw him again. And I, I think, I think like that was like the ghost of Andy Kaufman. Like, it, like, that's <laughs> how, like I don't know if the dude like did like. I was like, is this guy like on purpose? Like, because this is fucking hilarious. But I don't know if he is meaning to be hilarious. Holy shit! Like, and uh, and no, that dude never showed up ever again. Like, Sadly. no one's ever seen him. Like, nowhere around town. Like I was like, <laughs> yeah, because he killed himself that <laughs> night. I don't know if you know. I hope not. I hope he just went back to Russia and that maybe he's a huge star. Now he there. hates America. Yeah. He hates Corpus Christi, America. <laughs> that guy, Eric Snowden, and that's <laughs> that's how it happened. <laughs> I I I remember um, here in Laredo, we didn't have much of a scene. Like I said, they just had big events and they would bring big, big comedians, mostly Latino comedians, and. Uh, so I started doing open mics, right? I, I created one at a, at a coffee shop, an organic band. It was downtown. And uh, this guy who we all thought was homeless uh, walked in, right? And he had a bunch of fucking... He walked in with a bag. And uh, he was like, do you guys like rock and roll? And we're like, shit. <laughs> this is gonna happen. He's like, oh, yeah. Takes out a big fucking rock, big rock, <laughs> and rolls it on the ground. <laughs> and everyone's like... Huh? <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I I need to get laid." And he was like a crazy old homeless guy. Oh, and then he was like, "But I can't get laid because my my shoe wants to eat pussy." And then his shoe, like the stole, opened up, and he's like, bah, 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 bah. "Those are the best, man. Those are the open. <laughs> listen, open mic comedy nights are where." It's where cringe started. <laughs> yeah. Right? When you go back to like the history, like shucky ducky, quack, quack. Like just, <laughs> like we started, like, where it's like, this is so fucking horrible. Like, uh, like Andy Coffin was, was like, and this is fucking horrible, but it's, it, I can't stop looking at this because it's also, it might be fucking brilliant. Like, it's so bad. I don't know if I'm just missing something. I, I remember that guy, the last draw was like, he, he said something about a dog or whatever. And he went up to a girl and he, he got her by the shoulder. He's like, ah, nah, nah, nah. and the girl's like, ah, and then so like people got in like, hey, dude, like, don't fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, thank you. <laughs> and then he started giving out these paper cards he made. I do private parties. I oh, do all this. I, I love that. those guys. And then we never saw him again. Yes. Because, oh, he was telling every comic there or every beginning comic, he was telling them, hey, if I pay you a certain amount of money, would you write jokes for me? And we're like, <laughs> how much money? Do you yeah. have money? <laughs> like, what, you, what is he going? I, how much would you charge me? And I was like, just, well, I was just fucking around with him. He was like, 300. He was like, okay. Took out a notebook. He was like, all right, all right. And he asked another comic, how much do you charge? <laughs> He's like, the comic was like, 500? <laughs> okay. He's probably, he's probably putting, I'm going to murder him, <laughs> and I'm going to probably knife him, knife him up and nicely. Then, yeah. And then we never saw him again, so we, every, every time comics would go, we're like, I think that guy's dead. I don't, I don't know where he's at. Check it out. So I work at a, at a, at a phone company, right? A retail, a mobile phone or whatever. Okay. <laughs> just like uh maybe five months ago yeah my worst nightmare <laughs> this was probably three years ago there's this fucking guy with a bag and he walks into the fucking store and he's like you guys like to laugh <laughs> and i'm like oh no this isn't my place of work and uh, <laughs> this is my place of work and i'm like no He's alive. That's my. That was my first initial thought. I was like, holy shit, he's not dead. After that, he's like, he has a rock in there. I know, and as for sure, you know, he's like, 
hey miss do you like comedy and she's like <laughs> she just looked at me and i was like so you're on your own so you, yeah. and she's like yeah i was like do you like rock and roll and i was like i'm gonna take my break guys this is fucking <laughs> bullshit so uh moral of the story he's still alive and uh, he's still keeping comedy alive dude and, and he's still working that rock and roll joke man it, it, it's yeah. not gonna die <laughs> like i mean <laughs> and i think that rocks his only friend like to be honest with you <laughs> i think that's all he has man so i mean they try it's, it's like his wilson but but, but, but the guy but the guy's got the greatest delts in the fucking history of homeless people because he's just carrying around a backpack with a giant rock and cards where did he get the printer to print out the cards like good for him dude like he's keeping the dream alive yeah it's all i mean yeah you can get by the way the second time he pulled out cards they were actually a uh, cardboard like they were real card not stock? like a homeless card no, but like they were uh what's card stock yeah so i mean he's, he's doing something you know he's doing something with himself i don't i still to this day never printed business cards i I don't. I, I didn't either. Yeah, uh, I it, wanted to. It, it became a running joke for so long, like because you know, as I was started to make the rounds there in Corpus, you know, and as comedy started to get hot, club owners would be like, "Hey, uh, hey, uh, oh, do you want to do a show? Oh, give me a card." I'm like, "Oh man, I just ran out. I need to print more." <laughs> and my friends would be behind me, like laughing, like because that was my excuse. All the, I never wanted to say like that I just didn't have my shit together. Yeah, and then get a card. But so then I was like, "Oh, it fucking works!" Like just. I'll give you my number. Put it in your fucking phone. Like, I got to give you a card. You're going to fucking, it's going to sit in your wallet for two years and then you're going to throw away. <laughs> I recently got a card. God bless him. But it, it, that's not the point of it. At, at this day and age, do you really need cards nowadays? I yeah. mean, seriously, think um, about it. No, go to my Facebook. There, yeah. There's my card. Now, I think it helps with social more than like, I don't like the little like business cards. Like the, those are, you know, kind of pointless now. Mm -hmm. But if it, if you're actually going trying to like advertise like a website or direct people towards your social media, I think it is helpful like to have something after a show like to give out, maybe with a QR code or something that'll actually yeah that's fucking that's because because you'll tell fucking fifty people after a show hey follow me oh yeah 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 I'm gonna do that and then you get fucking five you know which is yeah. not not that anything's wrong with the five thank you for the five appreciate yeah. you but like it would have been nice to have like a higher higher ratio of the people that said they would yeah. follow you versus the people that actually do follow you i saw a guy uh i don't want to say his name well yeah why not it's, he's not doing anything bad but his, his name was alfred kang i, I want to go do, do a secret show at the improv in addison right mm -hmm. and um he was headlining <clears throat> and as he was in his joke he was closing out his joke he's like you guys still want more than that yeah i was like okay cool i want everyone to do me a favor here and then he was like everyone's like okay everyone take out your phone everyone take out your phones right yeah, now you can took, took yeah. out his their phone Go on Instagram, type in da da da, press follow. And I'm not gonna continue until you do. <laughs> <laughs> just hold them hostage. And then just boop, 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 boop. I just saw tons of people with their yeah, phones out just going boop, boop, boop. And I'm, I'm like, I'm horrible at, at stopping the show. To do, and you're, yeah, me too. You're supposed to do it. Hey guys, follow me. me. Too. This is my podcast. Like and, Sometimes and I forget to say, I, 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 my merch sucks. My merch is, is just stickers. <laughs> but yeah. uh i sometimes i forget I, to plug I, I do better at merch sometimes now i've just started like like with certain shows like unless it's like gonna be recorded or something like i'll just wear my fucking merch because it doesn't I was about say, to ask it doesn't that, say my name it doesn't say my name on it so they don't know until the end i'm like oh by the way if you like the shirt like it's that it's that yeah. the thing like or if nothing else then they just at least they saw it <laughs> and then when they see it on the table they relate it to oh to ah, like, ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, because, because i would get like it used to like i used to wear a straight out of corpus shirt and for some reason even when i was on the road yeah. people would ask hey do you sell those shirts like no why would i sell this shirt in fucking florida <laughs> like like well for, oh, for corpus so i was like i didn't know you were gonna be here like <laughs> i thought we all stayed there like no one told me i could fucking leave like and, yeah you know you you've been doing comedy for a long time you've worked with so many big names uh was there someone like uh, when you started doing comedy and as you as you're you get you keep growing was there someone you looked up to or just like said god damn that guy's a fucking i just love that you're a big fan of that guy and uh, like you mean when i actually started doing comedy uh, like, like, even even in your growth like you you know mm -hmm. how you start doing comedy and then you start seeing more comedy and you you uh definitely uh see other comments that you never knew existed and you're like holy shit that guy's amazing like was there like for me it, it was louis ck definitely. louis ck gave me like oh, okay. the courage and it's just like do you know what i want i want to do that definitely uh big names before starting comedy were, were de the ones that you you would so I grew up watching Ronnie Dangerfield. Loved Ronnie Dangerfield. Uh, I thought I thought he was dope. 
when I was in college, I was into like, guys like Mitch Hedberg. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then, uh, of course, you know, I loved early George Lopez and, and Gabriel's uh, specials were always great. And, and being another big guy, it was kind of yeah. cool to see him. I liked know, early George, get, too. You know, and uh, <clears throat> then once I got into comedy and started actually seeing the Texas scene, there's so many guys in Texas to look up to that are just absolute killers that may might not be mainstream names yeah. but just guys that i've just when i started they were already killing you know guys like like raymond orta and mm-hmm. and jay lafar and juan Villal and yeah i love juan <clears throat> and steve Torino. You, you know that you know when i first met steve uh i think he had just filmed his first showtime special it hadn't aired on showtime yet oh, so yeah. i got but he but i mean steve's been a, a fucking beast for years yeah so so he i mean and i remember the first time i opened for him and just That's very seeing what he did to to an audience and it just uh just he holds them you know for for an hour two hours yeah and, and just they're rolling and people he's not from, actually from Corp. he's like from flower <laughs> bluff or he's something like he's that, from right? he's from gregory, gregory which is which is seriously it's right over the bridge it's 15 minutes my yeah. my kids my kids live in portland which Gregory and Portland share a school system because the towns are so small. Oh, I so, see. So it's Portland and Gregory, but the school system's called Gregory Portland. And it's 10 minutes from downtown Corpus. Like right over the bridge, you drive over the bay on a causeway, and you're there. So yeah. uh, so when he claims Corpus, like it, it's it's fine. <laughs> like it's like yeah. it's like saying you live, I don't know what y'all suburbs are called, but you know, it's... <clears throat> Yeah, scenes are weird, man. Scene, scenes are fucking... I know I'm going off the top of here, but scenes are weird. Um, Corpus has a pretty decent scene. It's pretty cool, but there's only one main club, which would be Mesquite. Right. Um, you know, Sa- San Antonio, that's... You said a fucking comment the other day. It just made me fucking laugh my ass off because San Antonio goes through this <laughs> fucking thing and you're like, have you tried this, this, uh, Have you tried unplugging your scene and plugging it back in <laughs> to see if it works? <laughs> Dude, that fucking cracked I me had to, up. I had to, I had to swear off uh, comedy Facebook groups for a while because yeah. it was, it's just too hard not to go in there and and just fuck around. Yeah, and then you end up pissing. And then and then it was, I think it, I don't know who it was that, that finally was like, you know, there's a lot of comics on there that you don't see commenting that are watching to see how you yeah. conduct yourself, <laughs> and you know, it's time it's time misspent. That you, yeah, but. But I had seen that that one. They were going back and forth for way too long. They were upset about something that I'm, you know. At the end of the day, guys, if a club doesn't want to work you, if they if a club doesn't want to book you, I don't want to say fuck them, but fuck it. Like yeah. like don't waste your time like trying to convince somebody that, that you're bookable. Just yeah, get booked somewhere else. Yeah, and even and eventually, if you become undeniable, they'll, they'll come and they'll they'll offer you a, a date or you know and if it's not up to your standards if you don't like the pay if you don't in a sense they'll be for, above, they'll be forced then, to do then it don't take it right yeah you know um but don't be mad at, at anybody for working somewhere else or because they got in somewhere where you didn't get in it's, it's just a waste of energy your your time could be better spent writing more jokes or doing a podcast or filming or, a or sketch even creating your own show or creating your own show exactly yeah. you know and, and you know people will come if it's if it's good you know yeah absolutely man i yeah those facebook groups are, are pretty tough I, I actually got off of one like maybe two years ago called comedy complaints comedy complaints i started one in response so this is back that was probably like the last thing i did someone started that comedy complaints and i know the guy and he's a great guy and yeah. I, I get where he came from hey, josh do you mind pouring me up but the whole by the way what are we drinking lone star because you poured it in a glass you didn't want people to know like uh no, it's actually Michelob. I just don't oh, want to okay. have a, a beer here. Oh, I'm not ashamed oh, okay. of what I, what oh, I drink. Okay. I, was, I, was, I was like, why did he pour it in a glass? He know if he wouldn't. No, okay. because I mean, I don't, th- I, I don't think it's legal to have just a fucking. Oh, is it? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. It's like product placement, isn't it? I don't, I don't know. Well, I mean, I, I'm thinking. I I, I, uh, I asked for forgiveness, not permission. Uh, <laughs> but. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds kind of rapey, dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, Jesus Christ. When it comes to podcasts. Sir. Oh, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, I asked for yeah. forgiveness. Yeah, uh-huh. it, did, it, it did. It's because I had something in my throat. That's no, why, that's that's what why it, was. it sounded, right. sounded worse. Now, what was I saying before that? Oh, yeah, the comedy complaints. Oh, the comedy complaints. So the whole, the whole basis of the fucking group was to bitch about... 
about stuff, bad bookers, bad shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it turned into uh, something else. Uh, uh, yeah, and, <laughs> and so so then I, I created a uh, alternate Facebook group called Things I Like About Stand Up Comedy. <laughs> Like purely to troll the guy. Like, <laughs> and I didn't invite anybody. But slowly but surely, I started getting requests of people wanting to like join the group. And I still, to this day, and I I don't look in there. I don't know what anyone's posted. But every once in a while, someone <laughs> will put something that it's like, I like it when a booker pays me up front. It's like, it's like hey, that's fucking cool. Because <laughs> all these Facebook groups are just people bitching about so-and-so show yeah. or what so-and-so did to so-and-so. Or uh, you shouldn't. Nobody should work with this comic, or nobody should do this club. And it's like, ah, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. Well, I mean, I got off of it because it was very negative. Yeah, it's very negative. And then I, I got a lot of thing you can do. I got I got a lot of shit from other comics. Like you're a, you're a comedian, you can't take it out. Like it's not that. It's just it's too much negativity. And also, I have anger issues. Like I don't right. I don't want to be here. Like it's it's not like I started getting to the point. Where I was like. It was bringing me down. It was like, it, it. then why are you even fucking doing comedy, man? Like, this is just something you have to go through, but you don't have to fucking really talk about it because everyone's eating shit. Like, no, right. when it comes to the business aspect of it, you eat shit sometimes and then you move on. But to be whining, I don't know. I just didn't like the whole whining part about it. Being on a Facebook group is not a necessary part of doing stand-up comedy. Yeah, for sure. Nor do you need to be friends with every comic in the state of texas like that like that that always when i get like a friend request from like some comic, every fucking day every like fucking some day. dude that just started and it's like okay that like who or like and we'll have 200 mutual friends so i'm like uh okay like i guess we've never met before are we doing a show together like why are we that's exactly what goes through my mind process and, like um okay and the creepier thing is like <laughs> the the lack about like my wife will get friend requests from comics and she's like who's who is this is this a friend of yours i'm like i mean they do comedy and i do comedy <laughs> i don't know if that makes us friends you know it, we kind of do the same thing in kind of the same region no there's no there's absolutely no reason for you to be yeah. friends with that person like i don't hang out with them they're never going to come over to our home yeah i don't know if it's I, egotistical of me but sometimes <laughs> i uh, i leave them on hold for a little bit because I, I look through their page and sometimes there's not a lot of shit but i see all the mutual friends that i have uh with them and i'm like okay maybe they might want to get me on a show right i mean i'll accept you know it I mean? just because i don't want to be a dick but uh, but i'm like but i don't know you right <laughs> you know and um i don't know it's it's a weird thing and i even have a a, a joke like that that i'm working on and it's it's basically like <clears throat> you know how you get those fucking hacky fucking things of uh like Russian, like they're Russian models and they, they work in Hollywood and all this shit. And you know immediately like it's bullshit. Right. So you're like, who's a fucking idiot that's going to accept this? And then you go down, you have 13 mutual fucking friends. It's, it's like, always fun to oh, see so those guys it's, it's, it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, so you fucking idiots are this <laughs> robot's friend. That's cool, man. I mean, yeah, people follow How lonely are shit. you, man? I mean, I guess if you are, I mean, you can just go get the actual, you can follow the act. I guarantee you, whoever that person is, that model whose picture they stole has an actual Instagram page somewhere. Yeah. Like you could just go find the actual person. Yeah, the person, the and real they person. won't try to sell you shit or like just get your credit card yeah. or anything like they're out there fishing for like some dude that lives in, you know. I don't know Bahrain, or <laughs> wherever wherever the fucking the rich dudes that sponsor the, the Instagram hoes uh, or Dubai. That's the fucking that's the spot, right? That's where the Insta hoes go. And I get a, I get a lot of take pictures. Uh, black comic re requests, and that, that's always yeah. fun. That's always fun to get, get because I, there's like 42 uh, mutual friends. I was like, all right, cool, and i love i love honestly the black black comic like especially independent showcase guys because their commercials are like welcome to the soulful like fucking comedy show and they're oh, just shit. out there and i just i i love it so much like i mean i don't think i i can i can i can do it like that but the way they they present it out there it's just it, it i'm a big fan of how they're just they're way more fearless than i am you should and you should go like super mexican in all your showcases that i can't do Welcome that Welcome to taco time comedy nah, see, I, <laughs> that's actually called taco comedy uh oh, did, did you ever hear that that term before ta tacoing it up was was uh steve was the one that i heard, heard use yeah. the most yeah 
yeah, yeah. De- definitely taco mm-hmm. comedy man I, I i was never ever since i started i i couldn't do it because i feel and i mean i respect anyone who 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 does it like overdoes it you know right. because yeah of course we, we, as latinos we say some some stuff yeah. here and there but people that overdo it i just i think it's overkill and i think it's too easy it's fine if it's who you are yeah like if, if that is if that is how you talk and where you came from you know that's fine but we don't don't add the sauce on there because because the chances are like the real people are going to uh they're gonna know they, they can tell real recognize real right they can tell if someone's faking the funk and, and you're gonna have a bad set a horrible time like <clears throat> you know uh wasn't bill uh, the, the, the cable guy guy isn't he like isn't that a, f- a fake accent yeah he's Did like you hear from, that from hollywood isn't yeah he? yeah it's a character it's a character i don't know if, how mu- like if he has an accent at all or, or on what degree yeah, I, it I, is I, but the but the the cable guy itself is a character that he, yeah it's a gimmick yeah it's a gimmick it's, a, it's something that i think it's like started like on the radio or something and that's different when you're doing a character like and 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 people figure that out it's like okay then okay this guy's doing a character like a, so yeah, if like you're gonna go up there and like my character is a cholo like yeah. uh, okay what well, let's see how long this is funny for yeah you know uh speaking kind of with larry cable guy it's like you know you got a couple of specials and and he did really well and made some movies he fucking sell, sells out arenas and shit right? yeah, yeah yeah but he has a very niche audience but right. but the most main for the mainstream it, it's people are like okay i i get it like i i got it like i okay it's uh your your hillbilly guy that says off the wall shit can i share a yeah. quick story Aaron? About, sure yeah. so when you brought down courtney last week on uh, last thursday right? yeah yeah simply so, courtney simply courtney right right, yeah. right. i was I, uh, I made it to the mic Book. drop and he was just about to finish his set and everything yeah and so he's like heading over to the happy hour right and uh, which which you didn't go so that's cool man i know i, I got a set i got yeah. the last set on, on the mic drops so i was like oh, i haven't gone on in like weeks i want to go on but anyway so uh fuck your show and um mm-hmm. so he was walking out right and he did a little bit of crowd work with me because I walked in it like right in the middle, right, whatever. Yeah. So as he was walking out, he like shakes my hand. And my initial reaction was just to do like the same thing that I always do with like everyone, yeah. right? But I feel like he took it like, oh, you're trying to like blackify this handshake? Yeah. And he fucking over exaggerated it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thanks for making me feel like a dick. Like, goddamn. Well, don't be a racist. Like, I wasn't that's trying to. That's thing, just man. like my regular fucking, you know, like. Racist. Cool, man. Right. Thanks. Um. So sorry. Anyways, keep carrying. Yeah, there, a lot of people story. don't know. Simply Corny's white. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he just tans really well. No, I, I fucking love and he's Simply Corny, man. And he's a good dancer. He's a great dancer, actually. And loves grape soda. Oh, but that's just those are all just happenstance. <laughs> he's actually white. That's fucked like, up. That the black people that like that's that's a racial thing. Like I, I love, love grape soda. I love all those things, and I think I'm a pretty decent dancer, and I I do like so. And chicken wings, like it's like this is getting worse as we as you keep talking. No, I'm right? just saying, I'm just saying, like I don't get why that became like like who doesn't love those things? Like who's walking around like I don't like chicken and grape soda? Like <laughs> who the fuck doesn't like chicken and grape soda? Like you're like you're a monster. Uh, unless you don't you're like a chicken nut. and like, grape soda. Why did that become a black stereotype? It's like that's fucking. Those are good things. <laughs> it's like you know what black people like breathing. Yeah, no yeah. fucking shit. So does everybody. <laughs> Um, I was gonna get speaking of Latino comics. You worked with one of the most iconic fucking to me, uh, one of the most iconic Latino comics ever, uh, which is uh, Paul Rodriguez. Oh yeah, you've worked with fucking Paul Rodriguez. I've, I've worked dude. with him a handful of times, man. A handful uh, of fucking yeah, times. Yeah, uh, I actually got one of the first. Uh, the first time I ever worked with him was in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was dope uh, to see him work like the whole radio circuit and to yeah. see him go from like stumbling out stumbling out like just groggy like tired not like drunk or anything just like coming out of his hotel room <clears throat> he's got like the little he was dressed like my dad man like with the little wife beater on and yeah. he's got his little fucking hat on and he's got he puts on his shirt but he doesn't button it up the wire yeah, what's it called yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly and then, and then we walk into the station and he buttons it up and he he tucks it in and he combs his hair back and Dude, he's fucking Paul Rodriguez. Hey, how's it going? Hey, all right. Hey, yeah, hey, hey, I was eating some burritos over here, man. Yeah. Hey, your salsa is really, you know, fucking, that's really good. You know, and fucking shit. That's really and I'm good like, person. this dude just fucking turned it on like that, and it was really neat to watch him do that. And then, uh, how is he in real life? Is, is he a cool? He's humble great. Dude, he, man? Uh, he's very cool. The dude will talk. Like you don't talk when you're around Paul. You listen, because as soon as you pick him up, 
you know, unless he's like tired, yeah. you know, then he's just going to, he's going to nap or something. But if he's awake, you shut the fuck up and you listen, you let Paul talk and, and he'll just, he'll just go, you know, and, uh, that's the great part about him. And then he came down to, uh, then the second time I was actually recording for the Latin comedy jam was trying to put out a special mm. that never aired. So don't ask me where it's at. Uh, it's on someone's, it's on some, some techie guy's computer in, in Phoenix next to his porn, <laughs> right next to it, it's, it, it's sitting on some external hard drive next to like, who, who was filming that? Was it like an HBO thing? No, it no. A, it was something that the guy, the, the, Latin, the Latin comedy jam was filming independently and trying to sell to, uh, okay. uh, Fox or I don't forgot who they were trying to do it to, mm-hmm. but if you do it, done comedy for a while, you'll record a bunch of shit that never sees the light of day. Perfect. So this particular one was the Latin Comedy Jam hosted by Paul Rodriguez. Oh. We filmed it at the Laugh Factory, which Paul was uh, an, an owner of in <coughs> in, uh, in Glendale, I believe. Oh, no shit. <clears throat> so we went out to Phoenix. Paul hosted it. It was uh, myself and uh, uh, Dylan Garcia and... Uh, 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 what's the name? Fla- not Flaco Jimenez. Flaco. Uh, I forget. His. I always call. I always call him Flaco Jimenez, but that's that's the accordion player. But uh, the uh, Flac. Yeah, I know who I'm talking about. It's a very funny guy. I Isaac Flaco Martinez. Oh. Uh, um, out of out of L.A. and uh, and I believe Larry Garza. Oh yeah, San Antonio. We went up there. Never saw the light of day, but it was definitely cool to have Paul Rodriguez bring you up on stage. Yeah was definitely a trip and then he came down to corpus and i got to hang out with him there and took him to go eat uh tamales at my grandparents uh restaurant and get the uh, fuck yeah, out yeah of it was dope it was my grandparents you know rest in peace but my uncle owns it now so it was, it was dope my uncle got to take a picture with him and that's and amazing he has it on the wall now in the in the little taqueria there and yeah you know, it, it's kind of dope to to be able to you know bring someone like that to yeah I, I remember I, uh, seeing him as a kid, man. I remember yeah. seeing Paul Rodriguez as a kid. And it, Paul Rodriguez, to me, when it comes to comedy, was like, holy shit, like, there's there's Mexicans out there that, like, talk like me or my tios and stuff like that. And you're like, what the... Paul Rodriguez, to me, is like when I first saw the movie Blood In, Blood Out. Because right. Blood In, Blood Out, to me, was like, holy shit, like, there's these people that are talking like me and, and exactly. doing all these things like me, you know what I mean? So that's what Paul Rodriguez was to me. So I, when I saw you, it was actually the Larry Garza thing because I knew you and Larry went on the road, uh-huh. and uh, you were you were doing some shit with Paul Rodriguez, and I was like, man, what a fucking amazing experience! It, it, dude. it absolutely was. It, it was, uh, and uh, <clears throat> it was great. And then the, and then I've worked with him a couple times since then, in, in both in Corpus and uh, we did a casino in Phoenix. And, and, nice. And he's nice, and he, you know, as soon as he told me, hey, Gordito, hey, uh, where? You bring your tamales with you, you know, and whatever. Yeah, you know, so uh, it's cool. He has an impeccable memory. Like when we were when we were in in Las Cruces, uh, we were on the road traveling to El Paso to go do a Fox interview. He's on the phone doing a radio interview, and the dude's talking. And he goes, "Hey, I remember you." Because ten years ago, I did a show around here. He goes, "You were the guy. You had a Hawaiian shirt on. Your wife was beautiful, blonde hair." He goes, and the dude was tripping out. He goes. Oh shit! Like you remember me? Like he remembered the fucking radio guy. Wow! Ten years later, like, like wow, night, perfect. Like, he's sharp. Yeah, he's so sharp, man. So sharp. I haven't seen. I'm I'm kind of upset that I haven't seen a, a lot of his newer stuff or just seen him on anything lately. Like it's just he's got he's he when you, when you talk to him, man, he he's he's uh he's got he's got something left. He he uh that's the reassuring part every time I talk to him because I he's he still got something left to say, you know, which, which is what we, what I always worry about as a comic. Like, what have I just run out of shit to say? Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. One day. And, and for him to be doing it as long as he's been doing it and for him to, to be able to look at you and say, I, I still got one left in me. I still got a, I still got a, a hot special. <laughs> you know? shit. So that's pretty dope. He needs to get on it, man. Yeah. Another guy that I, I, I personally think it was, it was a uh, awesome to talk to. He's great at talking comedy. Uh, it's Willie Barcena, man. I, 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 that's another guy. You don't talk. You just listen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. it. Um, and uh, I, I, I did a couple of shows with Willie. In Del- I don't know where it was. I think it's Del Rio. And the way he talks about comedy is just like you said. You just fucking listen and gaze upon it and just like fucking just shut your mouth and just take it all in, man. He loves comedy. Like he loves doing it. 
you know, and the way he talks about it, it's kind of romantically. Oh, yeah. It's, it's really romantic the way he talks about comedy. And then I worked with this other guy named Eric Blake. Uh, he told me a story about Willie back in, 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 in California yeah. that he one time went into Willie's room. Uh, they were doing a show and he went into Willie's hotel room and all over the place there was just posteds all oh, over yeah. the fucking place and he was like, fuck, I need to step my game up. This is fucking bullshit. <laughs> Willie writes... Act, a lot of people say they write. I say I write. Yeah. But Willie writes. Yeah. Like he just sits there and just... You know, and probably a lot of it probably never sees the light of day, but he yeah. writes. And if you ever met him, you know, he likes to, you know, did he ever show you like his uh, his notebooks? Like he carries his specials around with him. Like it's like that stuff's go. Like he'll, he'll be like, yeah, like little manila folders with post-it oh, notes no, and he, loose he, leaf he, and he, journals. And he has them like, you know, <clears throat> wrapped together. And yeah. you're like, yeah, that, that was this special. And he'll pop another, you know, big old heavy stack of folders and that that was that special you know and no i never saw me i don't ha like i have like notebooks where like oh i wrote this down and then you know i don't look back at it <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i don't i can't tell you like oh yeah that's that hour in that book and that's out that that hour in that book like you know so so he actually has uh records of like of, it, of all his of developing shit. his material a lot of a lot of mine's done he didn't show stage. me that he just screamed yeah. at me he screamed at you. <laughs> How many do you really write? And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, I guess oh, yeah. I don't. Oh, yeah. I guess he, I don't. But he, he makes you sharper. He was the first oh, yeah, person no, who I, warned I, me against, against all being for bitter and, and all that. Actually, mm. that's not a story. He didn't scream at me. He screamed at, at my boy that was yeah. that was driving me because he asked my boy, how, how many hours a day do you write? And my boy yeah. had the balls to say, about two hours a day. And then, <laughs> and then <laughs> Willie got in his fucking face and said, Eddie, already seen Don't the stage? fucking lie to me. <laughs> and then my boy was just, and I was like, you shouldn't lie to him, dude. Like, I told him I don't write. Why are you lying? <laughs> Come on, bro. Yeah, I, I think Willie, Willie also uh, encouraged me like to keep doing it because, like I say, I, there's a moment, well, uh, well, Personal, uh, personally speaking, there's a moment when, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm going on six years already. So I'm like, I don't know, I should fucking keep doing this. I said, you bro, know? what you need to do is read the virus of the mind, bro. No, <laughs> he, he's always like a million, like like by the one weekend, dude. I swear, I had like twenty book recommendations from this guy. Like he reads, he he not only does he write more than anybody I know, he probably reads yeah, more than for anybody sure. I know, which which is probably why he has so much to say. Well-read people have a lot of shit to say. No, well, here was the thing that, that kind of motivated me a little bit more. Um, so while he's... There's that Mustang again. That's my... That's There's my that the team leader. The there team he leader. He, that guy works at... A, I was telling him, he's like, Vroom, I work at a he call works. center. <laughs> Vroom, I'm a team leader. <laughs> Vroom. Yo, that's me, though. Our producer works at a call center. That's you? Assistant manager at Chili's? No, but I, I don't <laughs> drive a Mustang. The, those dudes, uh, assistant managers have the dopest cars. Like, of anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you ever walk, like if you roll up to like a T-Mobile. I'm not saying that's where you work, but if you rolled up to like there, like like whoever has the Camaro, like that's the fucking assistant manager right there. He always has. Like I remember my assistant. I worked at Hollywood Video in high school, and the assistant manager had a Mitsubishi Eclipse back in the fucking day, like back in the Fast and the Furious yeah. days when that was the fucking that was the car. Yeah, he, he used to roll up in that. Yeah. It's the same guy that's like dating a high school senior. Even though he's like twenty three, <laughs> she's really mature for her age, man. Her mom lets me. Yeah, he he has the pencil thin beard still. <laughs> Port, the Puerto Rican, <laughs> yeah, Puerto Rican guy. Um, <laughs> back back to the story. So I did this show with Willie, right? And um, he just kind of gave me a little. I mean, obviously he he was drinking, but still, I mean, it it meant something to me. So I go and while he's on stage or whatever, and through the back, I, I I get him a tequila shower. I just place it right there. Yeah. And he's like, he, like he stops and says, like, hey, wait, 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 the fucker, you see this guy? This guy's gonna have an HBO special soon. You guys see? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I know you've been drinking, Willie, but that means so much to me, man. I walked out with my chest so fucking high, it was above my head. You got tequila, Willie. Yeah, oh yeah, I got tequila, Willie, and I I love all Willies, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right uh, you heard it here for her you heard first. it here first <laughs> oh what? it's in new america yeah. get over it yeah hey it's you not know? june anymore bro relax what the fuck does that mean pride month's over oh is that what that is i thought juneteenth <laughs> that too 
That's my holiday, bro. All right. I'm running out of shit to talk about, man. <laughs> How long do you go? No, do well, we ha- are we have people watching? Is this live? Yeah, we actually no have some No one watch. said anything, though? We have uh, Someone we said, I saw a comment that said, hey, tell your wife to accept my friend request. <laughs> 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 I thought I laughed a little bit earlier. So that was <laughs> I'll, I'll tell her, bro. I'll tell her. Who was it? Oh. I'll, t- I'll tell her just for that. I'll tell her to accept it. Can, can we see the comments? Is there any way you can see I, I can't see them on here. No, I can't, but I don't know if you can. Isn't either. it like the kind <laughs> that, uh, hold on, I think I can. Yeah, just flip <laughs> Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Jo- Joshua Kabaza said, nah, you got to kiss was bro. Fuck jokes. I don't know what that. You got to kiss ass, bro. <laughs> Fuck it. jokes. Oh, yeah. You put ass up. That's how you do it, man. Chug your beer. And then he's the one that said, tell your wife to accept my friend. <laughs> Josh, I would, let, I would let her. I would tell her. I would let I Josh to, do like, it. Like Josh and I are, are, are friends in real life. <laughs> Larry, Larry Garza, Larry our, Garza our is friends the greatest. In real life? Yeah, sure, sure. We hang out. Like, uh, I, sure, I, sure. I'd let him come to my house. Sure, he's never, <laughs> he's never been. Oh, maybe he has been. I think back in the day, I think he came to my old house back with my old wife. Oh and Jesus! All right, so, not to get all dark on you, <laughs> but but uh, but yeah, Larry Garza is <laughs> great. But the first time, like Larry. Speaking of Larry Garza, do you uh, need to top off? Uh, sure, sure. I'll take another one. Um. Have you had Larry on here yet? Not yet. Uh, I'm gonna, actually, he's going to come next month, uh, oh. August 8th, at the Laugh Laredo Comedy House. So, so I'm going to make sure I get him on the podcast. Yeah, so the first time that me and Larry really got to know each other, because we, we never worked together. We just kind of knew of each other. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think we were friends on Facebook, just because that's what you do, apparently. And uh, we both got booked to work with Willie. Up mm-hmm. in Paris, Texas. Oh. And so Daryl Felsberg, the guy that books that room, was like, hey, y'all should ride up together, save some money, you know, and uh, so so we did. So I drove up from Corpus, picked up Larry, and we, we drove the rest of the way. And he he couldn't help but comment along the way. He said, you know, how, how odd is it that we don't know each other? We don't know anything about each other. We don't even know if we like each other. <laughs> and we hopped in a car together because comedy yeah you know and and we you know it really that's that is the cool thing about comedy it does bring people from all kinds of walks of life together for yeah. some weird reason and and luckily in that trip we you know we had something to talk about and it wasn't awkward and we you know we didn't annoy each other you know and, and enough that that we keep in contact and when we work together uh but uh but i told him like you know the other but still i've never met his children I think maybe I met his wife once. I mm. think he's met my wife once, you know. So it's that difference of we're more coworkers, we're 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 work friends, you know, versus being you're, you're under the same team leader, <laughs> right? Right, exactly. So like, I wish him a happy birthday. I was like, I saw he throws his like ha- birthday bash uh, every year for himself, as he should. Stage four cancer survivor. Like, if anybody should have a fucking Hell birthday yeah. party. Like, like, it fucking throw Larry. yourself the fucking biggest party fucking every year. Man. Have a quinceanera. Yeah, okay. yeah, you should have a quinceanera. If you survive cancer, you should a have cancer a quinceanera. You should have a quinceanera every fucking year for the rest of your Larry life. Garza, if, if you see for. this, have a quinceanera every fucking year. <laughs> and I told him, I was like, hey, happy birthday, man. He goes, yeah, if you ever want to be friends in real life, you should come up. Like, because... <laughs> But, like, it was so fucking hilarious. Like, even though it's, like, kind of like, oh, yeah, I guess, like, I guess I've never, yeah, I've never been to your birthday. Like, so can I call you a friend if I've never been to your fucking birthday? Like. And then we fucked. Yeah. And then we made sweet, sweet love. And then <laughs> our bond has been unbreakable. Surprisingly, Holly was the bottom. Surprisingly. Yeah. That shit was crazy. It's very surprising. <laughs> yeah, Larry, I, I love Larry, man. Fucking funny. Funny motherfucker. He he's so he's so animated, man. So talented. He's great. And and then when you when you realize that that the first half of his career was spent doing a duo. So so the solo act is to me new because when I first met him, he was oh yeah the majority he he they were headlining as a duo, uh, uh, Larry and Reagan. And Reagan, yeah, because I I saw I I I knew about Larry uh, once. He was a solo act already. Mm-hmm. But I, I, Reagan's the guy that he does sketches and stuff with and stuff like right. that, right? Right. So back when I started, Larry and Reagan were headlining rooms. Wow. And and that was it. Larry didn't have a solo act. 
until maybe like three years in, then he he entered as himself and as a character into I saw that. in South Texas and he got into Deal the finals. something, with, right? It's uh, Uncle something. Uh, uh, yeah, he hasn't done it in a while. Uh, uh, I think it was Jesus, Theo Jesus. Theo Jesus, yeah. And he worked with the hit, you know, plumbing. <laughs> It, it was a, it was a great fucking character, great fucking character. Went got up there, did fucking horrible fucking one liners, <laughs> and would get pissed off at the crowd. Like it was really, it was it was some perform borderline performance art. Uh, and I'm not saying that in any kind of insulting yeah. way. Like I'm saying, like it was a performance. Those guys have watch. great great sketches. Uh, mm-hmm. what, what's the, what's the name of the uh, group? Co- Comedia Go Go. Comedia Go Go. If you haven't uh, follow them on Facebook, they have some great sketches, and probably they have one of my. One of the most, one of the best sketches I have personally ever seen, and it's one of my favorites. Uh, it, it's fairly new. Basically, it's my favorite because I grew up in Texas, and uh, growing up, my parents were into Tejano music, right? Tejano music was was a thing in, in my in my, in my family, and especially on my mom's side, Tejano was a big thing. So these guys made a sketch <laughs> where they made like you know those old school nineties like. Hey, welcome to Badass Hits of the Tejano, whatever. And then they had fucking funky names like the Jessica and the Nambe. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one was like, oh, uh, Michael and the Meco Makers. <laughs> <laughs> and all the guys, like if, if it's a dude, like Chencho and the Tequila Smokers or whatever. <laughs> it was, it's, Regan's, it's Regan's face in an old man's body with an accordion. <laughs> and he's all like, like super old school, like Tejano albums. If you haven't seen that sketch, like I honestly recommend you look for it. Um, just go to I'll comedy. To look, I don't think I've seen that one. Dude, I've seen a lot of theirs. And then the the characters, the, they're not characters. They're actually people that they get, like the actors. They get in the beginning. If they're they're two guys drinking, and they're they're both drunk, and he's like, "Hey, are those?" Little <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "Hey, are those little super hits?" <laughs> and then he's like, "See more, I can see." Was turn it off at door <laughs> like it's so <laughs> fucking funny like, like, like a the, time live commercial yes it, that's yeah. exactly what it is a that's time live commercial I feel that I feel and then that. the guy like the but the way he has the best one line ever because he he's like drunk and the way he says it it's like slurry it's like well turn it off vato <laughs> and then they was start li- no no it was two that? guys that are just like actors that they got oh okay one of the guys is actually like uh, one of those representatives of like a raza like. Uh-huh. The the ones that uh you know stick up for, I don't know what the fuck Larry told me I I forgot I can't uh-huh. I can't really get but if you haven't seen it go to Comedy or Go Go and look for that skit it's uh Los Super Hits just look at L- Los I'm Super a, Hits I'm gonna have to look it up right dude now. I love theirs while you're while you're looking up Los Super Hits my favorite one is the uh the over the top sequel the rise of Mike Hawk. I don't think I've seen you that haven't one seen that one no. they they did a, a movie trailer for the sequel to Over the Top the Sylvester Stallone uh, arm wrestling movie. And it's about his son, who's now taking on his name, and the kid's name was Mike. So the rise of Mike Cock. <laughs> <laughs> no, th- <laughs> and it was great. It's a, it just I'm not gonna tell you anything else. Just based off of that, you should go look it up. Over the top two trailer, the comedia go go. They also have um, ones of over exaggerated like Mexican snacks, especially during during, <laughs> during fiesta. You seen those? Yeah. So like, have you had chicken on a stick? Oh, well, you haven't had chicken on a stick with a corn and flaming hot cheese on it. And, and then every commercial, oh, oh, but now introducing to you. And then they just keep exaggerating like the Michela. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Yeah, but wait, there's more. And they do this shit like 10 times and they keep adding to the Michela <laughs> like other shit. Like it's fu- <laughs> have you tried a or something like that? <laughs> it's fucking crazy. These guys are actually. They're fucking they're geniuses, great. man. They're they're, they're great at they're sketches, brilliant. and they 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 deserve more than uh, what they get. That's what I think personally. All right, let's get off Com- Comedia Go's dick now. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, they're fucking. Awesome. You have a podcast. I do have a podcast. You do. It, I do. It's nowhere near Comedia Go Go's level. There, public access. You should watch. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's, it's Comedia Go Go. They just they're, keep sucking their dick. They're, they're no, they're fucking great. I've been on their podcast, and now they're doing a live thing. Uh, but yeah, my podcast is. Uh, it's it's just me and I'll have a guest on and then I do like a uh, a review with like my wife and stuff like that and uh, and that's cool I I like that I like I like the, the review with your wife and stuff like that yeah it's kind of like because I, I I'm just a fan of that because I love your mom's house with Tom Segura and Christina uh-huh. Brzezinski have you ever seen that I've never 
amazing. Yeah. It's just just them two. It's, it's, a, it's a wife and a husband, and, husband. Okay. It's and fucking they're good. fucking. It's amazing, dude. And they're both comedians. Yeah. So it, it's well, it's it's dope. Well, when you're looking for like a co-host, you want somebody that you have chemistry with. So yeah. it's the most logical choice because a lot of podcasts are done out of your home. And who's the person in my house that I have the most chemistry with? Well, it's probably the person that I'm sleeping with. I hope at least it's the person I had babies. It's the person that I made a, a child with. You know, if we if we can't have a decent conversation for thirty to forty five minutes, then shut then, down the whole fucking yeah, podcast. Yeah, then we're in fucking trouble. So it makes sense. So the husband wife combination works. Uh, Chingo does his now with his wife. Um, another friend of mine does does the husband and wife thing, and so it just it makes sense. But I also don't want her to feel like. This is, I don't want her to feel like it's like a job or something she has to do. So I kind of leave it like the last 20 minutes of my yeah. podcast is that's what we, what we do. And we just kind of catch What is it called? Uh, the, the whole podcast is called the original Gordito yeah. podcast. Are the, you the, the original Gordito? Uh, no, I'm not the original Gordito. I'm a, I'm an original okay. Gordito. An original Gordito. Who's the, who's the other original Gordito I, that you I, know? I, I don't know. There's a, there's I'm, I'm a lot coming with the hard hitting there, questions. There, man. There's a lot. There's a lot of us. I, I'm not. I'm not purporting to be the. I'm definitely not the first, and I won't be the last either. Uh, I'm gaining weight. Can I be an original? But but, gordito? but well, okay. So not to give away what I said, but the the term original gordito me, means is uh, I say that I've been fat my entire life. Mm-hmm. I was actually born ten pounds nine ounces. That was my baby weight. <laughs> So like there was never a point in my life That's like the way like, my like, a, like a lot of fat like a lot of fat guys like if you look back like in high school like they were ran track and shit and they just like let themselves go or like even at some point even if they were chubby as a kid like in their 20s they joined the military and like fucking got yeah. buff for like a few years like no there was never a point in my life like I've never been a thin person <clears throat> like not for a single day in my life Jesus. so so that's why i say i'm an original gordito I, that, I, like, I like that right i like it speaking of the original gordito tonight whoever's watching or whoever's gonna watch this you're gonna catch him uh anita buen um some special guests actually from new york that anita brought with her what? uh francisco flores buddy of mine good buddy of mine and i'll be hosting tonight at the rooftop comedy showcase i just saw the time i need to go set that shit up and uh, if you want to see more of this fucking funny guy, go to the Rooftop Comedy uh, Showcase. It's absolutely free. Uh, so you have no fucking... It's a Wednesday. You know you have nothing to do. You know your team leader has been is on vacation. So <laughs> Yo, real shit, my team leader is on vacation. There it is. And yeah. you're going to the show tonight, right, yes. Josh? He's going to the show tonight. Uh, Josh will so be there. Fuck team leaders. And uh, <laughs> Javi, thank you for doing this, man. Thank you for being oh, thanks here. Thanks for having me, And man. Uh, let's go do a show. Yeah, let's yeah? have, let's good have set, some bro. good sets, bro. All right, be out. Play that music. <laughs>